In this tech tip, I'll show how to easily create chamfer tool path in EdgeCam using both sides of a double angle milling cutter. EdgeCam offers a range of possibilities for chamfer milling and deburring. Many EdgeCam users integrate chamfer machining and deburring into the CAM process using taper mills, spot drills, and ball nose mills rather than hand deburring. Prismatic geometries such as holes, pockets, and sidewalls are easily handled, but the ability to accurately drive along 3D model edges is invaluable. Users with 5-axis CNC machines can maintain the precise tool engagement that is critical to accurately chamfer contoured walls. In this example, Deburring is done using a lollipop tool. The ability to integrate deburring into the CAM process eliminates tedious toolpath creation from various access positions or, even worse, deburring by hand. Now, with EdgeCAM 2024.1, toolpath for backside chamfer applications is also easier than ever to build. Utilizing both the front and back sides of double angle cutters allows easy tool path creation for chamfers at the top of model edges, holes, and various features, and the same operations on accessible backside geometry. Additionally, tool path avoids adjacent geometry and work holding fixtures, eliminating any need to construct or manipulate model geometry. And as always, simulation previews machining, which provides a high degree of process security. This part has some tool path already created for the top side deburring. Let's begin by having a look at the tool. When we go to Tool Store and have a look at the tool and head to the geometry page, notice the undercut distance with a value. This input field is the radius distance expressed from the major diameter of the tool, and it's critical to have a value. If you don't have a value, you will have a tool displayed, but you won't be able to do any undercut machining. When that tool is selected, the value is passed to the More tab of the tool dialog, and key point number one is that tools intended to be used for any type of undercut machining need to have an undercut distance. We can see there's a couple of chamfer cycles that have been built to handle the chamfering on the holes. There are different steps, so obviously different features. But when we turn off the part rendering and render the feature, we can see the feature has a chamfer already in it. If we edit the feature, we can see the details of that. Or if we went to the Feature tab, selected one of those features, and looked at Properties, we can again see the chamfer information that has been captured by Feature Finder. When we look at the setup and configuration of the flexible chamfer cycle, we can see that the target is the feature. The option to use feature information has been enabled, and the chamfer type is chamfer to lay the tool against the chamfer edge. Over on the Depth tab, we'll see that the chamfer depth is not required. It's grayed out, it's in the feature, and we've decided to use feature information, and the depth engagement of the tool is controlled with the tip depth input. Let's turn the model rendering back on and go explore the third chamfering cycle. This targets the top of the part, breaks that edge. The targets to machine were the edges on the model. There is no feature. There are no edges extracted. The model edges are directly picked. Because that's not a feature, there's no feature information active. We are doing a deburring where we're letting the tool break into the model edge. And then over on the depth tab, the depth of the desired edge break is input into the chamfer depth. And again, we're using tip offset to control the tool's engagement depth. There are upper and lower chamfers at the side of the model, which we will also machine with this tool. 
It will be easier to repurpose existing toolpath than to create brand new. So we'll copy some toolpath and then clear out the old inputs and pick our fresh targets. And we're going to choose the lower model edge. And this is key point number two. The help system clearly says that for chamfer applications, select the lower model edge. We've done that, and returning to the box, we can uncheck use feature information since we targeted a model, not a feature. The application is still a chamfer type. And then on the depth page, we're going to plug in a chamfer depth. Now, you might be able to get away without doing that in this case. However, if you want to use cut increment, perhaps a heavy chamfer, break the increments down to smaller chunks, you will need a chamfer depth value. And let's remove tip offset and use contact point instead for depth control here. This is an open cut, so I want some extensions. And rather than just type a value, I always prefer to take advantage of the formulas in cycle dialogues to build intelligent relationships, in this case to the tool, so that if I change tool sizes later, my values will adjust to the tool. And it just a little thought here eliminates some future edits down the road. Check our lead values and we'll change those up. We don't really need them on this type of a cut. Oh, and one of my favorites, comments. The comment is going to pass right through to NC code, so convenient for the programmer and convenient for the CNC machine operator. Before we get to how depth inputs are handled at the backside of a double angle cutter, Let's recap how it's always been done with the front side of the tools. So when we think about a chamfer at the top end of the workpiece, whether I'm using a spot drill, a taper mill, a lollipop tool, or a double angle cutter, one of the options for depth input is contact point. And we can put in a value from zero all the way up to 100, anything in between. At 0% contact point, the tool path will be placed so the minor diameter of the tool is right at the bottom of the chamfer or edge break we're machining. And a value of 100 would place the tool right at the top end with its major diameter. Well, obviously, tool path is not typically created at 0 or at 100, but those are the depth inputs that we've used for many years. Customers will be familiar with that. Well, when we have a double angle cutter, we now have one major diameter, but now we have two minor diameters, one at each end of the tool. So how's this controlled? Well, the good news is the chamfer cycle doesn't have another input you have to think about. You don't have to tell it I'm on the front or the back of the tool. The first thing you need to do is call a double angle cutter from your tooling database, and that tool needs to have an undercut distance input. So if you've called a tool, has uh, undercut distance input, then as part of the chamfer cycle, you're going to pick geometry to target. And that geometry is either going to be at the top end or the bottom end of the model. Edge cam understands that. It detects that automatically. So when you think about contact point, you can put in your contact point based on the end of the tool you're using. You don't have to do anything different. It's based on the machining side of the cutter. Well, another way to input depth is to use tip offset instead. So under this option for depth inputs, let's say that I wanted to place my tool half a millimeter or 20 thousandths of an inch below the bottom end of the chamfer or deburra machining. Again, it's based on the machining side. So it's still the same inputs we're used to. It's simply based on the machining side. And that's the secret to being successful with this nice new enhancement. Let's copy the tool path we just built and repurpose the copy for the lower side. When we edit the new cycle, we'll update the comment. Then we'll reset the picks and choose new targets, and we'll pick the lower model edge. And you may be wondering, Joe, is that the lower model edge? Yes, it is. When we're backside machine, that lower model edge is from the perspective of the machining direction. To put it another way, it would be the edge that the smaller diameter of the tool is engaged with. So yes, this is the lower model edge. We'll select it, return to the cycle, and with no further changes, let's come look 
perpendicular to the tool and see what the results are. We'll simulate both cycles and you'll observe that the tool is in a good position for each cut. Let's take a closer look at the lower chamfer machining. Simulation shows that while the tool path is exactly where we asked it to be, the shank of the cutter is a bit close to the model edge and we have some more room at the major diameter that we could use for tool engagement to shift the tool slightly off the model edge. Before we make that minor adjustment, I want to remind you of the conversation we had earlier about the engagement points at the minor and major diameters of the cutter and how with the double angle cutter there's actually one major and two minors. So when we think about the engagement side, we're just going to draw the tool a little bit closer to the major diameter by increasing the contact point. And with that input in place and then immediately simulating the motion, we can see we've drawn the tool further away from the sidewall. Do you have questions on this or other topics? Please contact us to discuss. We would love to hear from you.